2023 season. And with us is Kenny Moore, who's really putting up incredible numbers all season. 11 interceptions so far. It's the Colts and the Ravens under the lights on Monday night. Some might say it's cold. Others, like myself and my partner, we say this is football weather as we welcome you to chilly M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. Tonight, we culminate Pivotal Week 14 with a great Monday night matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, you look at this Raven team as they get ready here. And losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they've handled all covers through the first three months, a perfect 12-0. Yeah, they're three-quarters of the way to a perfect season, and now is where it really starts to get into your mind. We'll see if it affects their play in any way. trying to stake their claim to postseason football. Week 14 of the NFL is underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. But number eight, Lamar Jackson trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. They go play action now. Jackson. And his first pass is incomplete. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. Throwing again on second and ten. Jackson. A swing pass here to Edwards. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a game of three. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Jackson from the shotgun. And oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. And he punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Hardman on the return. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Have interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Let's go now. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Right back to Pitts again. 
And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. The partner of this offense, 12 and 0 now on the year following their latest victory. And during the week, a lot of folks making comparisons between this squad and the 1985 Bears. You know, they too were 12 and 0 at this juncture of the season before losing on a Monday night, 38-24 to the Dolphins at the Orange Bowl way back on December 2nd of 85. But then they never lose again en route to winning Super Bowl 20. And when you look back on it, partner, did it? All and that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Chase Claypool with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Colts are on the board first on the road here in Baltimore. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen, and it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. We'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Here's Jackson. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Here's Hardman to return. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. As the Colts offense makes their way out, we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. Well, we do know, Charles, they will be in the playoffs. They currently sit at pole position number one, but nothing set in stone right now. They still there have to go. earn that top spot. And it makes me reflect back to preseason when you and I do our tours of camps. The prevailing message in each and every one of them was what? Win the division. Win the division. Win the division. You know you're in the playoffs. It means something. It means a home game. It means a number of other things. But winning the division is paramount. You're right. They won't step off the gas here. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. And Charles, with that completion, I'm told that puts him now over 3,000 yards passing on the campaign. And Brandon, I think we have to start to think about where we are in the season. Because right now, 4,000 is not out of the question. I think a big game or two, he's certainly capable of getting that done. Taking a deep shot here for Hardman. And this is caught at the 20. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Nicole Hardman, 56 yards. And the Colts have taken a 13 to nothing first quarter lead. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future as well. And by association, a bright future for the franchise too. Hey. Gay is up and good, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. 
And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, this defense for the Colts, they were terrific last week in the victory over Kansas City. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. On second and 12, Jackson. Open man is Duvernay. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Now Jackson. Open man is Bateman. It's complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A gain of 37. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Jackson now. That's taken in, and he fumbled it. It's on the ground, and the Colts pick it up. Pass the 10 to the 11-yard line, and that's where the return stops. And now, meanwhile, after the dust settles on the fumble, we've got an injured player here as well. So the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Come on, come on. Hey. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Here's second and eight. Throws the out route and finds Claypool. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. He'll drop to throw. Claypool with another catch. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings him to third down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's got his man, that's Hardman. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Already over 1,000 yards receiving this season. That catch is just going to add to his total. Certainly not resting on his laurels. He's trying to continue to gain as many yards as possible and continue this big season. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Tyus Bowser, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Now back to throw. Able to hit his target, Claypool. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 14-0 to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession. As they'll see what they can do on third and goal. Ready, check. Ready, 
He'll look to throw. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Ten yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. Gay's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting... And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And the offense for the Ravens returns to the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, okay. you're down three scores already. And he lost the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And some room to work. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs. Able to improvise and get the first. He'll look to throw. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quinny Pay just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. They have very little daylight there. They'll get a couple up to the 44. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Buying time to his left. And he'll just get rid of it. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. This is taken at the 18. A good head down running on the return gets about 15 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But I also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Ready, go! Ready. Second down, another run with Taylor. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give the Colts 13 yards at a first down. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I gotta tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in the running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They'll look to throw. Completion here to Claypool. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it. Some and the ball is free. Taylor lost it. And the Ravens have got it. He was trying to do anything he could to get that final little bit for the first down. Instead, he lost the ball. Yeah, and he was short of the first down, but not by much. Trying his best, as you noted, to get there. Sometimes that extra effort can cost you. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards. Second down. The last run good for two. Here's
second and eight. Again, it's Edwards. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down tonight. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Throwing is Jackson. Eluding the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. On second down, it's Taylor. Seven yards there at a first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Back to throw now on first down. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 34 for a gain of just a yard. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Let's go now. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw. Looking there for Pitts, but intercepted. Picked off by Marcus Williams. And the Ravensons are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. So the interception there, and Charles, I'd imagine that's something you can maybe live with in December, but not come January. And I love how you make the distinction there. You're talking about regular season versus the postseason, the playoffs. Because these guys, they've already clinched the playoffs, but they know, looking ahead, when they get into the postseason, they've got to take better care of the football because turnovers in that situation, they really become magnified. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Jackson to throw. Throwing middle, and it's complete. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. It's been a very one-sided game so far. they got to change what they're doing right now. So you can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. On first and ten, it's Jackson. A throw taken in by Tylen Wallace. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Now it's Jackson. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again is Jackson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. 
Throw right side is complete to Andrews. His tight end. This one out closer to midfield across the 45. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. There's McCole Hardman as he brings this offense onto the field yet again. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but his shredding defense is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. And a nice run to get this up over the 20-yard line. That's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They'll drop to throw. That's caught left side to tight end Pitts. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Looking to throw. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 11 more on that one, and another first down. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this, or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. And inside give to Jones. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. And they're going to speed things up here. Second and two. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Kyle Hamilton picks it, and the Ravens will take over here at their own 12-yard line. A tough adjustment to the end. <laughs> that throw was my fault. I should have thrown that and pass. And his problem with turnovers is only exacerbated by his early showing today. That's a couple for him here in this first half, and he's cleared the double-digit mark for the entire season. Yeah, I, I had Pierce open, or more open. I should have I should have thrown it to the guy underneath. Can't believe I did that. I ran a throw. I said, oh, shit. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think... in this situation either side of the ball just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it so we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far as we send you down to orlando where jonathan coachman has our ea sports halftime report coach okay brandon thanks very much welcome in everyone to our ea sports halftime report let's get you caught up on what's going on around the nfl we'll get started down at hard rock stadium in miami where you see the final score there. Derek Carr leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. From there, we're off to check out another game. And they were winners in that one as they defeat the visiting Seattle Seahawks. Joe Burrow, a strong performance there, over 300 yards passing with three touchdowns in the victory. Lastly, let's get you to MetLife Stadium, see what's happening with the Giants at home in East Rutherford. And they were losers in that game as they fall to the visiting Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, four touchdown passes in the victory. On now to a look at the next-gen stats for the Colts in that first half. And our statisticians got through a couple of pencils already. This offense is on pace for potentially 500 yards in passing. That's pretty incredible. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. Both teams going back through their game plans, making their final halftime adjustments. And for the call of the second half, we go back up to Baltimore and rejoin Brandon 
and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. And the Notre Dame man, Chase Claypool, in this offense ready for their upcoming possession. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, go, over 100 right. yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, it means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Here's a second and two now from the 33. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw this ball away. I don't know if he's just not even on the floor. Yeah, he's, he's like not even trying to throw the ball away. Is it still the right stick to throw the ball away? He's not, he's not trying to even throw the ball away. Like the second I go to start running to the right, I, I'm throwing the ball away. I just kept running. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up forward. The Colts send out their punter. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And he was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 45. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll run the option left. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Matt is my controller just not working? Like, I switched over to intercept the ball, and he stood there. And the Ravens are able to cut into that deficit. Like, what, what the fuck's going on That's today? That's you felt they had to have here in the he third stands there. to get back I'm in this game. I'm trying intercept the ball. there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we like, know what this. the fuck? We know where we are. But sometimes, that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Tucker with the extra point, and he can lead to 17-7. So they only needed three plays on that. Why should we put you a massive, massive, massive Tucker now to kick it away, following the touchdown. I'm dominating them on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, Jackson's made a few plays here, and they've done nothing. Touchback with a great scheme of things, and this is the fucking bullshit they're doing. They're going to take the field. This now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got this complete to the tight end pit. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing, because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode. Really try touchdown. Kyle Pitts, 64 yards. And the you know what's funny? I was actually thinking, Pitts, I haven't had a big, lead. big game with Pitts. He's been consistent in a little bit, but uh, now he's, he's had his big game. He's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. At three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The
18. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, and now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Here's Edwards again on second down. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. The third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Jackson being chased out left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. The Ravens send their putter out now. Standing just outside his own goal line. And take it right on the 30. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Kyle Pitts returns to the field along with the rest of this offense for the upcoming series. Creeping up on 1,000. Could get there on this drive. So a challenge for him to do that. But also defensively, maybe a challenge for them to not allow that. And that means probably kicking even more coverages to his side. What that really means is wherever he lines up, you will have a cornerback over in his area. Now instead of blitzing your linebacker, drop him into coverage. Instead of the safety dropping into regular coverage, that safety moves into that area to try and discourage a quarterback from going to him. That means everyone else, win your routes. You've got an opportunity to catch passes now, too. Yeah, a little bit of a cat and mouse game. That'll put him over 150 yards receiving now. Quite a ball game and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens 30. 43 yards rushing for him now to this point. On third down, here's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Now a throw in the end zone, a first down, but it winds up incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Finding Hardman here over the middle. And he will not be able to get the first as he can get this only down to the five. They'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And Gay knocks this one through. And that will extend... Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded just outside the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. 
And now here come the Ravens. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Colts are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. They'll set up to throw. Out nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. I don't know why I can't throw the ball away. I, I don't understand. I'm hitting so the right stick the unless they change the button. I'm throwing the ball away. Certainly a long way still to go, but stranger things have happened. Well, when you're going to have big second-half comebacks, plays like that have to be involved. Well, they nerfed it and slowed down the animation. I, I don't know what's going on. Trying to get rid of it. Tucker now to add the point after. He's got it, and the score is now 27-14. So now we're going to move up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They're right back out there after watching the fumble go the other way. Still in control of this game, but that needs to serve as a wake-up call because they're not in the clear yet. No, the message should be clear. That fortunes can change pretty quickly when you turn the ball over. You've got to take care of it, otherwise that lead could slip away quickly. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Again, it's Jones. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. You know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Second down, another shot for Jones. And across midfield he goes.
It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. It might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. I think there's a fatigue factor that's kicking in defensively. You know the will is still strong, but I think the offense is starting to bend it just a little bit, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's looked that way. We'll see if they can continue this already strong drive. First and 10, Taylor now. And he's got some space here. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 75 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Let's go now. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the ten. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They touchdown Colts. Chase Claypool with his second touchdown of the night. And the Colts add on to their lead. And it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Another touchdown through the air for them and for this rookie quarterback at the helm. He has put them in a great position, Charles, to get the victory in this one. He's absolutely taken charge. Every touchdown for them has come via his arm. Zero rushing touchdowns, no special teams, no defensive scores. All him throwing the football. He's at cruise control right now, and so is his team. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens heading out on offense as we look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And as we take a look at the playoff picture, certainly still a lot of jostling to go in these final few weeks. For the moment, they would be a wild card team. Far from locked up, but that's that's why this is exciting. These last few weeks, a lot to play for. So much to play for. And remember, seven teams in each conference go to the playoffs instead of six. And not to mention, remember when the league made that move a few seasons ago? to put divisional games at the end of the year. So you get to week 16 and 17, you're playing for playoff spots, and you're playing divisional games. Couldn't be more exciting than that. A five-yard pass on first down and another five-yard connection there. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver trying to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field. So he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there, 22. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Jackson will throw again. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Now a 
man open down the middle of the field. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. I think this offense, specifically this running game, they're going to have to find a way to turn the page because they haven't found a way to run it effectively thus far, and it's cost them. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. The Jackson going to hold on to it again. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up Ford. Considering they've seen him have some big gains against him throughout this game, that's got to feel like a measure of revenge as they trap him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it this time. Doesn't work out. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. 102 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ballgame. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Taylor and he's got Rome and he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory that good for 19 at a first down on the handoff Taylor and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They'll set up a throw. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. The Colts on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now a give to Taylor. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now a handoff, Taylor with it, and only able to muster a couple. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. 
And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, and worked out. It doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. And here's Jones again on second down. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. Back to throw here. He finds Pierce. It's complete. And the Colts are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Catch number 100 for his career right there, and it's good enough to keep the chains moving. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Take a knee. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory and a little bit of a surprise. They lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ballgame. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games. Not unusual, so Sean Madden that football, goes against baby. the green like the one we saw here. It's quite the oddity. Now, let's face it, they'll be very happy that they pulled this off, but they do know that in the future, they've got to work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. So for Indianapolis, the streak lives as they move to 13-0 now on the year. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, they can ill afford to drop too many more as they fall to 7-6 and six on the year. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers.